Hi everyone and welcome to this Mind Valley Masterclass on the topic of bending reality. I love that word and I love teaching this class because of the results that I see people get just from attending this masterclass. And then those who take our advanced programs like Becoming Limitless, they just take that further. So the word bending reality, I started using this word in 2005. I was teaching meditation for around five years of my life. I had quit Silicon Valley to become a meditation teacher and I noticed that as I got more and more into my practice, it would start to feel as if I was lucky, as if the universe had my back. I started joking with my friends that we were bending reality as we built up our businesses, as we built up Mind Valley. And then, in the year 2011, when Steve Jobs' biography by Walter Isaacson was released, the word bending reality was used in that biography three times to describe some of the things that Steve Jobs did. And if you studied Steve Jobs, you know that he was really into Eastern philosophy, really into meditation. And I started to wonder, is there something to that? Is this more than just the law of attraction? Is there a way to access these states so we can do good in the world and we can feel as if as we go through life, the universe has our back and we can move smoothly in flow towards our biggest goals and intentions. This is what we're gonna be talking about today. So I wanna make sure that you have a journal and a pen ready. Now, I teach fast and I use slides because there's a beautiful series of unfoldings in terms of ideas that we're gonna take you through. You see, this masterclass is not about learning something new. At Mind Valley, we believe that there's a vast difference between learning and transformation. You can learn something and then you can forget it the next day. In fact, any average book you read, within 24 hours, you forget 80% of what you learned. But transformation is different. Transformation causes your mind to expand and see the world in a different way. And when you do that, your mind can never again shrink back to its original size. What I'm gonna do here is attempt to give you a transformation by showing you a new way of viewing the world and your position in it. And when you take this model far enough, it leads you to be able to feel as if your bending reality. So you know, a lot of what I'm gonna teach you come from Eastern tradition. The sages, the mystics of the East have been talking about this for thousands of years. But often, it's not easy to take what they are teaching and integrate this in the modern world. But if you look at some of the most remarkable people today, they were tapped into this. The late Steve Jobs, who built the biggest company in the world today, right? He spent months of his life in India studying with these sages. In fact, when Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook went to Steve Jobs for advice, Steve told Mark to visit India and spend time at a particular ashram there. I've also seen modern personalities who actually travel to India, spend years meditating there, come back into the Western world and do amazing things. My friend John Gray wrote the book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. It sold 50 million copies. But what many people don't know about John is he spent years meditating. My friend Jay Shetty, who is the single biggest personality in Facebook, he has more fans than any other human being alive on Facebook today, and he's using it for good. But what many people may not know about Jay Shetty, he spent three years meditating in India. Now, I'm not saying you need to buy a ticket to India and, and go through a meditation process. What I'm saying is that there is something more to the way we are trained to function in the Western world. In fact, this knowledge is missing and it's costing people to be so ineffective at moving their lives forward. So, in ancient Indian philosophy, they talk about the idea of Maya, that the world is an illusion. And Maya is one concept, but the other concept is called Upaya. And Upaya is how you function in this illusion. This class is gonna teach you the art of Upaya. So my friend Mark Watts, who is the son of the late Alan Watts, the famous Zen philosopher, he explained Upaya this way. He says, if you go to India, there are these incredibly mass rivers, really wide, filled with rapids, filled with, with things that could cause your boat to flip over. But you have these boatmen who are in the river and they have their boats pointed in a particular direction, right? And they've calculated this direction. They know what they are doing. When they kick off from the bank they are on, they know exactly when they're pointed in this direction, their boat is gonna navigate the rapids, their boat is gonna overcome any obstacle in the way and get to the other bank in the fastest, smoothest way possible. That, he said, is upaya. It is the art of knowing how to flow through the illusion that is maya. Now the problem is most people in the world they don't have their boats pointed in the right direction. They kick off from the bank, aiming to take what they think is the straight line to the opposite bank. 
and that's when they crash into the rocks. This is why if you look at today's world, you see so many people trying to build businesses, trying to do things big, but then facing stress, facing anxiety, working way too many hours. They're trying to do everything with their conscious mind, not realizing that maybe, just maybe, as Steve Jobs said, the world is an illusion and we can learn to flow within this illusion in an optimal path where things become so much more easier. Now, what you're learning is an abstract from my program at Mind Valley. The program is called Becoming Limitless. This is not something that you're gonna fully master in this 60 minute masterclass, but this class is gonna cause a transformation. And when you walk away from this class, you are going to be a different person because you're going to see the world differently. The advanced skills, the techniques of accessing altered states, of being able to fully merge into the illusion and shift the illusion, that's in the Becoming Limitless program and I hope you get a chance to check it out. When Becoming Limitless was released, it was the single highest rated program in all of Mind Valley. And for those of you who might want to consider this program, at the end of the class, we'll have a sneak peek. So don't worry, you'll get to check it out. So let's get started with bending reality. I grew up as a kid in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. That is me with my mom and some of my cousins. We are standing in a river somewhere in Southeast Asia. I didn't come from a wealthy family. My mom was a school teacher, earning maybe 600 US dollars a month. Uh, my father was employed at a department store. And I grew up in a single room, sleeping on a mattress next to my parents' bed until I was like 12 years old. I didn't come from wealth. But when I was 14, my parents did an incredible gift for me. See, my father never went to university, but he self-educated himself through reading books on personal growth. And one day, through my dad, I stumbled upon a book on meditation. I was 14 years old, and that started my love affair with what we call today accessing altered states. It's being able to go into these different states of mind and access abilities that are not consciously thought to us by our modern education system. It's what got me fascinated with intuition, with meditation. And as I started practicing this as a teenager, I noticed incredibly mystical things happening in my life. I couldn't always explain them, but I just would seem to be lucky. And even health problems I had. As I started playing with these skills, I was able to heal these health problems. So this started my love affair with the field of transformation. And, it's, and I guess it's why I ended up where I am right now, leading Mind Valley. Now, while I was dabbling with this as a kid, the real breakthrough happened in Silicon Valley. It was 2001, the dot-com bubble had burst and I lost everything, including $30,000 I had borrowed from my father. I was literally renting a couch from a college student in Berkeley. And I was sending out my resume to every job available on Craigslist, hoping, praying that just someone would hire me because I was running out cash. Worse, I didn't have enough money to fix the brakes on my car and I got it into a car accident and I owed the insurance company a ton of money because I didn't have insurance either. So I was truly desperate. Now the only job I could get in Silicon Valley at that time was a job that was essentially dialing for dollars. I had to pick up a phone, call lawyers in America and introduce them to this technology from this company I was working for. And the economy was so bad there was no salary. If you didn't close a sale, you did not get paid. No base salary. So I was miserable. I, I, I had no idea how I got myself in such a shitty situation. So I went on Google and I can't remember what I typed in. Maybe it was, why does life suck so bad? Maybe it was somebody save me. But I discovered a class on meditation in LA and I flew to this class and it was a very unique class. I had practiced meditation, but this class was on deep advanced meditation, accessing alpha and theta states, tapping into intuition. Now I go back to my job after this class, right? And by the way, I was the only person who showed up for that class. There was no one else there. The instructor was kind of disappointed, I guess, but I was the only person who showed up. That type of stuff wasn't cool back in 2002. And see, back then, we had to go to the public library in San Francisco, check out the yellow pages, then you'd be assigned a territory. Mine was San Antonio, Texas, and I had to call every lawyer from A to Z in, in my territory. But now, with what I'd learned, I was able to do it differently. I would access these altered states, hold up the yellow pages, and then go into my, my, my relaxed state of mind, run my fingers down the yellow pages, and I'd get an impulse on who to call. I didn't, it's like I would intuitively know that I should skip that call but take this call. And in one week, I doubled my sales. Now sales is something which is very 
data driven. You know how you do. You know your average closing rate. It doubled after one week and I was mystified. So I went deeper. I started studying additional classes. I learned how to set intentions. I learned creative visualization. And it doubled and it doubled and it doubled. And in the span of four months, I got promoted three times. At 26, I was made director of sales of this company and shipped out to New York. I worked with that company for another 18 months and then I felt this calling. I felt that the universe was asking me to do something else. So I quit cold turkey and I decided I wanted to teach meditation. Now, I was married at that time. And if you have a high level job as a director of sales and you decide to quit and teach meditation, let me give you some advice. Talk to your wife first because that is the surest part to go straight into becoming broke again. So I started a meditation business and um, it sucked. No one was attending my classes for the first couple of months. Now that is the apartment I lived in, in uh, 8th Avenue, New York, right in Times Square, above the Playwrights Tavern. And keep in mind, this was not Disney Times Square as it is today. This was hookers and drug dealers Times Square. So I started Mind Valley in that little apartment, traveling around New York to teach meditation classes, really, really, really little money. And um, you, you ought to know this, right? Two years before I moved into that apartment, it was a Thai massage parlor. And if you live in New York, you know what Thai massage parlor is code word for. So yes, Mind Valley did start in a former whorehouse. Now that is me just starting out. You could see I, I could barely afford pants. Uh, everything I'm sitting on, that table, that chair, I salvaged from the streets. A beautiful thing about New York is every year when Ikea comes up with their new catalog, your neighbors toss out the previous year's stuff, you get to pick it off the streets and boom, you get free furniture. And that table I, I'm working on where I started the first Mind Valley website, that table in the IKEA catalog is actually called the LAC, the L-A-C-K, right? How about that? IKEA actually named a table. The table is cheap, it breaks very often, but they actually named a table LAC. I guess maybe they wanted to symbolize the lack of abundance you would need to be in to want to buy that table. But that's how I got started, but very rapidly, as I started teaching meditation, what I found is that when you're in that practice of tapping into that altered states, you start to be able to move the maya, to shift the illusion. And so even though the first few years were hard, things changed rapidly. Today, when I train myself on meditation, I train in state-of-the-art centers, right? Um, close to Seattle, where neuroscientists are studying my brain. And I'm actually one of the only five people in the world right now doing a particular form of training um, to, to, to understand how the brain influences reality. Um, and I'll be sharing some of that as we go on. But from teaching meditation, I ended up being able to build up a business that gave me the luxury of being able to connect with some of the world's most remarkable individuals. And through these connections, through building up this business, Mind Valley was formed. After seeing what meditation could do for me, I set a goal. I wanted to be able to spread these ideas of consciousness to one billion lives. So if you're here watching this webinar today, you're one of what will hopefully eventually be a billion. Now I want to show you what started happening as I started bending reality. Mind Valley started becoming one of the leading companies in transformation, the leading learning platform right now, which is Quest, leading because it has the highest completion rates in the industry. People who come on this platform complete their courses like no other. We're able to attract some of the most remarkable teachers. We've got an incredible team that supports us. We run transformational festivals all around the world that people flock to. And one of the coolest things is that our tribe, including people watching this, are so committed to transformation that once a year, we take over a city and thousands of us move to a city together with our kids. We rent one of the foremost buildings in the city, turn it into a giant mobile university. It's called Mind Valley University City Campus. And that's a picture of Tallinn, Estonia. So all of this though, I get to, I'm so grateful I get to live my dream, but all of this started because rather than try to struggle completely with the outside world. I learned to go inside and move and shift and bend the Maya from within. So today I'm happy to say that I have a wonderful family, uh, two kids, and I have a business that, that I truly love. But it all started when I began to learn how to bend reality. Now, some of you may be skeptical and you may be wondering, well, based on where I am, would this work for me? I want to show you some simple before after photograph. So you can see that no matter where you are, you can start small, you can start sucky, 
this is possible too. This is what you will find when you go to the About Us page on our Mind Valley website. Uh, this is the page that we use to hire people. We now have 300 people globally. But when I started, about this page was basically me and my dog. I, I literally put my dog on the page to show that we were a larger company than just one person. In fact, I gave my dog a title, Director of Public Relations. I'm not proud of that. This is the auditorium in our office right now where we get to train as much as 150 people at a single time. And we do trainings here for the city. But this is where we started before the auditorium, four years before that, that was what Mind Valley's auditorium was. You can see there's barely enough chairs. People are sitting on the ground. That plant behind me has precisely 11 leaves. But we had to start somewhere. This is a picture of a Mind Valley office space today. That's one of our meeting rooms. But that is our office space in 2005. This was the Christmas card. We recently sent one of our authors. That was a Christmas card for 2003. My cat has still not forgiven me for that. And this is our kitchen where people come to meet and cook and, and prepare lunch during a, um, the regular week. That's our kitchen in 2005. That single table filled with all the best cheap Nestle three-in-one coffee money can buy. So what caused the skyrocketing? I can tell you, we did this all without any investors. We did this all from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We became one of the dominant American personal growth companies, not even being in the United States. But it all started, we were able to skyrocket because of this practice of being able to not just struggle with the outside world, but to go within and create the right synchronicities, the right coincidences to move you forward. And you can learn this too. I want you to make sure you have your notebooks ready because we're gonna go into the transformation section of this class. It was very important for me to show you just what is possible, to make you understand this, this idea because a lot of people come here and you're skeptical because the modern world doesn't prepare you for this stuff. In fact, the modern world pushes this away as being too woo-woo or impractical or they dramatically simplify it, such as that movie, That Secret. I love that movie. Many of my closest friends, many Mind Valley authors are in that movie, but that's kindergarten personal growth. Now, what you're gonna learn here is a concept called the evolution of consciousness. I first introduced this concept in my book, The Code of the Extraordinary Mind. And the concept was so popular people started sharing it with their friends. That Code of the Extraordinary Mind in 2017 became the number one book globally on Amazon, thanks to you guys. You can see that's actually an Amazon chart. For, from September all the way to December, it was one of the top 10 books in the world. And for a brief time last year, I actually became the number two author globally in the world on Amazon, thanks to your support. With one book, I even overtook all of J.K. Rowling's books and all of Tolkien's books, and I love those guys. But this, I'm sharing this because this happened because you guys helped get your friends to read this book because you found some of the ideas here so powerful. And that's why I wanna give you the best I can in this masterclass. So here's the important concept in that book that got a lot of people thinking. And it talks about how people across the world, they live life in one of these four levels, right? And these levels represent how you relate to the world. And depending on what level you're at, you need to use different personal growth tools. For example, if you're at level two, creative visualization is powerful stuff. But if you're at level one, it's not gonna work for you. And if you're at level three, it's gonna be too slow. You need to know what level you're at to know what tools you're going to use. So before I teach you what tools should apply at each level, let's actually talk about the levels. Now the level right at the beginning is living in the culture scape. We call this level one. Level one is where you are influenced by the world around you. So it means that you are influenced by media, by television, by politicians, by what your parents tell you. You're influenced by organized religion. And there are many ways these influences come about that you basically live life being influenced by other forces. And as a result, sometimes you feel like you can't control life. You are in what is often called a victim state. Now most of you, are not gonna be at level one because level one people will not sign up for a webinar like this. They'll dismiss it. Most of you are gonna be at level two. Level two is where you have an awakening. You just stumble upon personal growth. And level two is where you just understand that you can choose aspects of the world. You can set goals, you can set intentions. Now, I moved to level two when I understood goal setting, when I started understanding that I could write down my goals and that 
I didn't have to be a victim of the world. I could choose what I wanted to experience by setting intention. Now, when you're at level two long enough, you start moving to level three. Level three is where you start understanding that there is a world inside you. Level three is when you start playing, not just with meditation, but with accessing deep altered states with alpha level, theta level training. It's when you start understanding that you can actually access these abilities within to heal yourself, to bend reality, to move forward. And when you play there long enough, you start moving up to level four. Level four, you start understanding that there's a much wider world beyond you and that you can actually influence the world in a massive way and that your goals are not as important as what inspiration or guidance needs you to do for the world. So let's go deeper in these levels. So at each level, you react to the world and shape the world in different ways. Now we'll go deep into level one, the culture scape. So the culture scape emerges from culture, from tradition, whether it is tribal culture or modern corporate culture. When we talk about culture, it's the rituals and beliefs of the people around us that are influencing us. Now the problem with the culture scape is that many people, as they go through life, they are growing so tremendously till they hit college. Then they graduate, they get a job, they continue growing, but then life becomes a stagnation. They continue doing the same thing day in and day out until retirement. You do not want to be there. What you want to do is understand that you do not have to follow the status quo. You do not have to take the job that the majority of your friends are doing. You do not have to settle for a boring life and work just to earn a paycheck. And that's when you start moving to level two, which is what we call the awakening. So let me give you an idea of what this means. The human mind is a really powerful thing. What we believe to be true of the world becomes true of the world. And what we are trained to see, we start to see and experience. So there was this brilliant episode of the Radiolab podcast, and it's asked this question, could ancient cultures see the color blue? Interestingly enough, if you look at ancient texts, right, like Homer's The Iliad, there is no mention of the color blue. In the Iliad, which was written some 2,500 years ago, the sea is described as the wine red sea, not blue. You look at ancient Chinese literature, no mention of the color blue. The sky is never mentioned as blue. So the, the people in this podcast, the scientists here were asking, did the color blue exist? Could it be that ancient cultures could not see blue because they didn't have a name for the color blue? Now, they decided to run an experiment. So the scientists went to Africa and they studied this tribe called the Himba tribe. This, this tribe is based in Namibia. And as you can see from that screen, they showed a circle of green squares to the, 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 the Himba tribesmen. Now, in the Himba language, there are 19 words for the color green, but not a single word for the color blue. And when they showed this circle of green squares and a single blue square, and if you look at that picture, you can easily see the blue square. Well, guess what? The Himba tribesmen could not identify the blue square. They were asked to pick out the square that were different. They could not see it. But when they were shown this circle and asked, pick out the square that was different, can you see that? Can you pick out which green square is different? Give yourself a moment. Well, it's that one, right? The Himba tribesmen immediately, immediately could zero in on it because they had 19 words for the color green, but not a single word for the color blue. Now, this raises a question. Do you really see something if you don't have a word for it? And I believe the answer is no. When we give a word to a concept though, we start to live that concept. And this is one of the tools of transformation that I try to bring in as I'm teaching. So I'm gonna give you a word for the culture scape, a word for the rituals, the beliefs around you that influence you, us so much. And that word is rule. A rule is a bullshit rule that we adopt to simplify our understanding of the world. I popularized that word through my book, but when you start to see that the way we are trained to live life is based on so many rules, from the rules of corporate culture to the rules of organized religion to the rules of our individual culture, you start to see how so many people get trapped and thus stagnate. And when you start to understand that we are swimming in a sea of rules, you open yourself up to questioning. You start to understand that life can happen to you or life can happen from you. You can create the life you want from within. And as you dabble with that, you start to notice a pattern that your thoughts are creating your reality. And when you notice that pattern long enough, you move to level three. Level three is about going within and recoding the inner world. So as you can see from that diagram, you've moved from one 
to two to three. Each is an expansion of awareness. Let's talk about level three for a moment, recoding the inner world. So Michael Beckwith, who's a dear friend of mine and, and a teacher here at Mind Valley, talks about this brilliant idea called Satori and Kensho, right? So he says that we are here as souls to have a human experience. And the primary thing our soul is here for is to learn, to grow. And so our souls can grow in two ways. Our souls can grow through pain or Kensho or, or through Satori or insight. Now, Kensho is growth through pain. You build a business with all your passion only to see it go bankrupt. That's painful, but you learn from that. You learn what not to do for your next business. You end up forgetting to take care of your health and you end up in hospital. That's pain by Kensho, but you learn from that and you swear to eat better, to take better care of your health. You are in a relationship and it breaks up and it is so painful, that's Kensho but you learn what not to do in your future relationships and how you need to evolve as a human being. So you can grow through pain. And Kensho is the idea that pain sometimes comes to us to get us to our next level. But Beckwith also says this, right? When you start going within, when you're at that level where you've learned to go tap into your inner states, you can grow through insight. You're able to tap into intuition, tap into insight, and that is growth through aha moments, growth through inspiration. That's what we call Satori. Satori is painless growth, and you always want to aim for Satori. Because if you don't get to Satori, your soul will need to kick your butt, and that butt kicking is gonna be painful. I drew this diagram in my book to explain this concept. So one axis is time and the other axis is quality of life. You can see that Kensho moments cause a temporary dip in your quality of life, but you come out of that eventually. But Satori, these cause a beautiful upward trend. You wanna aim for Satori, growth through insight. Now, as you start tapping within, as you start recoding yourself at level three, you start emerging into level four. Now, here's the difference. When you're at level three, you have intention, you have goals, you know what you want. But when you get to level four, something interesting happens. Your intentions disappear. Rather, you have inspiration. You get a gut feeling of what you want. You're not setting goals anymore. Rather, you are listening. Your inspiration leads to your intention. And this causes you to move into a state, a beautiful state that is sometimes called the state of limitless. And I, I, I give this state four qualities. When you move to level four, you start moving into the state where you feel limitless. Remember that movie, Limitless, where this guy discovers that pill and as long as he takes that pill, the entire world seems, seems like something he can control. He has superpowers. Well, obviously that movie is a stretch, right? But I believe you can get to a state where you feel limitless when you are able to get to level four. And I break it down this way. The first thing you experience at level four is a sense of connectedness. You feel connected to all life. The second thing is, through that sense of connectedness, you are tapped into your intuition. This little voice speaks to you. The third thing is, this little voice guides you with inspiration and your goals come from that inspiration. And the fourth thing is, as you pursue these goals, where the little voice is speaking to you, it feels as if luck is on your side. So. The first feeling is connectedness. The second feeling is intuition. The third is inspired action. And the fourth is luck. You just feel lucky. And the beautiful thing about level four, at level four, you're like a superhero. You want to change the world for the better. And one of Mind Valley's missions is to create a global tribe of change makers, not just bring in people who want to transform themselves, but bring in people who want to transform the world because God knows the world needs it right now. But that is an essential ingredient of level four. So let's just pretend for a moment that reality is an illusion, right? How do we now bend reality? And remember, whether reality is an illusion or not, whether the, whether the ancient Hindus who talk about Maya were right or not, it doesn't matter. Whether this is true or not does not matter. Simply believing it's true will reap you results. My acceptance of this model gave me the confidence to pursue seemingly impossible goals. And science says this, what you believe to be true tends to become true. There are numerous studies that show this from the placebo effect to, to other studies that show that what you expect of someone tends to become true. Well, if you could accept any model of reality, why not choose one that suggests that you can literally bend reality with your mind? So 
Pretending it's true will bring you incredible benefits, but the process must align with the level that you're in, and you can ascend these levels. So this is the tool that you would use if you're at level one. Now I did say earlier, most of you watching here would not be at level one, but I bet you that you know people who frustrate you because they seem to be at a different level of personal growth with you, right? It could be a spouse, it could be a friend, it could be a boss, it could be uh, someone you know from college. Now what's going on over there is that they are simply unaware. They're unaware of just how powerful their thoughts are in shaping their reality. Now when you're at level one, what many people don't understand is that they think they have goals. They think they are selectively creating their life. You see, we know our beliefs create our reality, but in our heads, there's a tiny section of what we know we believe and a much wider section of what we don't know we believe. These are ideas that we have just assumed to be true from childhood. So from the time you're zero to nine, you are creating beliefs. As children, we are meaning-making machines. For example, a parent at a particular moment might not give you a hug or not pay attention to you when you felt you needed it. And in your mind, you create a belief that says you're not worthy. And these beliefs stay with you as adults. So as adults, we are often so unaware of the beliefs we have in our heads, subconscious beliefs holding us back. So we may set goals, but the subconscious beliefs that we are not consciously aware of, these beliefs hold us back. Beliefs on money, beliefs on life, beliefs on love. For example, when I was growing up, one of the things I believed is that to be successful and wealthy, you had to work hard. Today I know that that is one of the biggest bullshit rules out there. You do not need to work hard to be successful to have money. You need to be aligned and you need to learn how to bend reality. That's my new belief. I didn't know that when I was young. And so I would work myself to the point where I would get sick, believing that that was the true reality. So many people, who are just getting started in personal growth or haven't even discovered personal growth, their lives are operating through the unconscious beliefs that they have. But the point is, you don't wanna do that. You wanna embrace focused, directed thought over unconscious creation because your unconscious beliefs are also creating your world. So this is the tool. The tool that you may wanna use if you feel you're at level one or if you know someone at level one, Really simple tool, it's called segment intending. And um, it comes from a philosopher by the name of Esther Hicks. And segment intending simply looks like this. You ask yourself, you pretend, wouldn't it be nice, right? So you wake up in the morning and you divide your life into multiple segments. Think of your, your, your day as a clock, okay? So you have your morning segment where you have breakfast and maybe go to the gym or meditate. You have your commute segment. You have your early morning huddle. Then you might have a two hour session where you're just working with your projects on your computer. Then you have lunch. Each of that is a segment. Now, when you're meditating in the morning or when you're in commute, you simply play a game. And the game is called the wouldn't it be nice game. The exercise is called segment intending. So you say, wouldn't it be nice if I had the most amazing commute to work? Wouldn't it be nice if my morning huddle was fast, quick, and inspirational? Wouldn't it be nice if when I sat down uh, for my two hours before lunch to work on my project, I was super productive and totally in flow? Wouldn't it be nice that my lunch conversation was inspiring? You just play, wouldn't it be nice? And you can teach this to a child. You can teach this to anyone. But what happens is that you get your mind to play, to dream, to imagine that beautiful realities are possible. And when you do this, you start not only getting more excited about your day, but what you notice is many of the assumptions, the wouldn't it be nice assumptions, start becoming true. And it's really bizarre how this happens, but it's such a beautiful exercise. I recommend to many people who are just getting started with meditation to play the wouldn't it be nice game, to segment intent the entire day, all the way till bedtime. So the wouldn't it be nice exercise, you can do it while you're meditating, you can do it in a shower, you can do it while you're having breakfast, but you start it at the beginning of the day and you just play with it and you pretend that, a, that throughout the clock of that day, you are gonna be having the most beautiful moments. This is the first step in training someone to start understanding that you can, that you can shift reality with your mind. Now, as people start doing this, they start feeling luckier, they start noticing beautiful things happening, and now this might be at level two. Most of you here right now are most certainly at level two. As I said, at level two, you take personal growth seriously. And coming to this masterclass, we know it's an investment of your time, so many of you are at that level. So at level two, your job is to be clear on what you want to experience in life. Hicks says this, 
Your work is to simply determine what you want. The most valuable skill that you can ever develop is the skill of directing your thoughts towards what you want. To be adapted quickly, evaluating all situations, and then quickly coming to the conclusion of what you most want, and then giving your undivided attention to that, right? So here, unfortunately, is the reality of most people. Rather than stay committed to what they want, they change their minds multiple times. You may decide that, hey, you really want to take that trip to South America. And then you read some article about, you know, um, some other country, Greenland, say. And all of a sudden, your goal is to go visit Greenland. But what happens is that when you flip so rapidly, you jeopardize that process of creation. And so what might be coming towards you certainly dissolves because you've moved your thoughts to a different object. Many people flip-flop in terms of their goals. So what Hicks is really saying here is, be clear on what you want. This is why writing down goals is, makes it so much more likely for it to come true. Practicing a meditation practice where you can visualize your goals makes it so much more likely and stay with it because there is such a thing called the time gap between what you visualize and what comes to you. There's a certain amount of time that, that separates that. And by doing the practice and staying with it, you give space for that to come. But when you move around rapidly, you disrupt that process. So here's the tool to use for people at level two. And that tool is basically creative visualization. Now, creative visualization is so basic, you guys can search online creative visualization edition and there are videos I've put up that teach you how to do it. It's a basic tool if you're just getting started, but they are more advanced tools. So bear with me, I'm gonna get you there because I no longer practice creative visualization. I've gotten to other tools which are far, far, far more effective. But for someone at level two, maybe a son or a daughter, you wanna recommend that they look into creative visualization. Now, what I notice about creative visualization, right, is that there are two things you can do to amplify the results. The first is don't attach to the outcome. So don't be super specific on what you want. Rather, aim for the energy. So don't, if there's a particular house that you want, don't be super specific about that house. Rather, visualize yourself being in a spectacular home and pay attention to the feelings you want from that home. Maybe it's the feeling of joy. Maybe it's being able to walk in and, and be in a room filled with light. Maybe it's being in a beautiful space that's romantic with your partner and a place that's conducive for the learning opportunities for your kids and a place that where you are surrounded by nature but you don't decide that you want a particular home in a particular neighborhood because sometimes what the universe has planned for you is completely different. So you wanna focus on the feeling, but not be completely attached to the outcome. And the second thing is, you wanna be able to put yourself in a positive state of expectancy. Now the state of expectancy is one of the most important but overlooked elements of creative visualization. I wanna share it here because when you get this, you really start seeing magic happen. So imagine you have a friend and this friend borrows money from you. And what happens is that a week passes and he doesn't return the money. And then another week passes and he doesn't return the money. And you're like, dude, you promised to return this to me in seven days and it's now two months. But your friend is no longer answering your WhatsApp or your calls. Now, in your heart, you're getting frustrated. You're thinking, my God, I can't believe I trusted this guy. What a bastard, how dare he? He runs away with my money, but all of a sudden, in the third month, you get a WhatsApp message from your friend. He sends you a, a picture and he says, this is a picture of the check. I'm sending you back the thousand bucks I borrowed from you. This is the FedEx tracking number. If you get on FedEx.com, you'll see the check is in the mail. Now, you, have you got the money yet? No, the money hasn't hit your bank account, but you know the check is in the mail. He sent you the tracking number. He sent you a picture of the check. You know it's coming to you. All of a sudden, you feel differently about him wouldn't you, right? You know the check is in the mail. For many people, instantly, the stress, the frustration of losing that money disappears because the check is in the mail. Now, the same thing applies with creative visualization. When you put that thought out, you gotta feel as if the check is in the mail. You cannot keep questioning it. You cannot keep wondering, will FedEx deliver it? Will FedEx deliver it? As long as you keep doing that, you jeopardize that creative process. So the most important thing is the expectancy effect. Now, know that there is an element of time gap, right? So think of an elephant right now. Just think of an elephant. Now imagine if 
we were created as beings where as soon as we think of something, it appears in the world. When I say think of an elephant, boom, an element, elephant falls in your head. Probably a very unpleasant experience. So there is this time gap, right? And this time gap, I guess, is part of life. So whatever it is that you're practicing creative visualization on, expect it to happen, but know that you gotta give it time. Now as you get better at this, the time gap gets smaller and smaller and smaller. But the most important thing is, you visualize it, you release, you relax, and you expect it to happen. So those are the tools for people at level one and level two. Now when you practice this enough, you emerge into level three. Now the big difference between level two and level three is that at level two, you are setting intentions for what you want in the world. But at level three, when you've done a lot of that inner work, when you've started going within more, you start listening to a still voice within, the voice of inspiration, the voice of intuition. And that inspiration leads to your intention. Many people, when they emerge into level three, they tell me that they stop setting goals. It sounds scary, right? But you stop setting goals. Rather, you listen and you feel a push or a universal whisper to move towards that which you need to do. Your goals, in short, are not coming from you. They are coming through you. So level three is where you awaken to intuition. Intuition is turned on like a tap. You get a gut feeling on what projects to take on, a gut feeling on where to go, and there, at that event, you meet the right person you need to, to do what it is that you need to do in your life. It's a beautiful state to be in. Now, I can't teach you how to turn on your intuition in this masterclass, there's so much we're covering, but if you enroll in the Becoming Limitless program at the end of this, if you decide to do that, there is a chapter that goes deep on intuition and I teach you some of the most powerful tools I've learned to develop advanced intuition. Now, as you practice more and more, you awaken to level four. I think I got to level four maybe in my late 30s. Now at level four, there's another massive shift in how you function in the world. Level four is about total inner peace. You no longer are in competition with anyone else. You no longer are setting goals that the outside world suggests you need to pursue. At level four, you're motivated to serve the world in your own way. And the tools you use at level four are again, quite different. So if at level three, the tool is primarily intuition, at level four, the tool you're using are at a whole different level of advancement. We're gonna to come to that in a moment. Let me tell you how I discovered these tools. It has to do with stumbling upon the secret to raising alpha waves. So a couple of years ago, I got to join a group of remarkable individuals at a laboratory where the scientists there were studying what happens when we hook people up to machines that measure, right, that measure their brainwave states. And then we use advanced biofeedback to train them how to activate the right brainwaves. What they found is that you could take ordinary people and through the right approach in five to 10 days, get them operating at the same brainwave level as Zen Roshi monks who would spend 20 to 40 years in meditation. Let me repeat that. Getting in five days, giving someone the same brainwave state as Zen Roshi monks who spend 20 to 40 years in meditation. It's incredible what science is able to do. Now, it's expensive. I, I think I paid close to $15,000 for this training, but the results were amazing. And I'm gonna show you some behind the scenes pictures. So what happens is you're strapped up to this machinery and you're in a chamber. That's me going into that chamber with a group of other fellow authors. And uh, that's kind of what it looks like. You have these machines measuring all of these different brainwave states and Looking at a screen and listening to a sound, you train yourself to access different states. And then you step out and a neuroscientist reads your brainwave states and lets you know how well you did for that day. Then the very next day, you go back in and you repeat the states. And they found that different brainwave states correspond to different aspects of the mind's abilities. For example, what you're seeing over there is called the delta state, right? And when you can access the delta state while being fully awake, what happens is, They've noticed, and scientists have actually noticed this, but you're able to create incredible coincidences in your life. And if you can access the theta state, theta is when you activate psychic potential. If you can access high alpha amplitude, which is another state, you're very peaceful and relaxed and tapped into inspiration. Now, you wanna know something crazy? So at this laboratory, they were trying to figure out how could we get people to increase their alpha amplitude, that means higher levels of alpha, and to create brain coherence, which means both brains at the same state at the same time. And the scientists were studying this, and they noticed that there was this one lady who over and over and over again was hitting record alpha levels. 
And you know, they, they knocked on the door and they asked her, what are you doing? What are you thinking about when you're strapped to these machines? And she says, I don't know, I'm just trying to forgive that asshole. And basically, she was trying to forgive her ex-husband. But as she was doing that, as she was forgiving this man, she was tapping into some mystical ability in her mind. Her brainwave states were changing. And so when they studied that, they found that forgiveness was the key. If you want to improve your ability to access alpha, to access theta, the number one thing they, could, they, they were asking people to do was to forgive everyone in your life, to, to forgive people who hurt you. And scientists today are studying forgiveness and they are finding that forgiveness brings about some incredible abilities in people. It boosts your alpha performance. What you're seeing there is, is my alpha charts. It boosts your theta performance. Theta is where you tap into a psychic ability. And forgiveness is a powerful tool. Now, you gotta do it right. So they developed a particular methodology for forgiveness. And when I'm in this lab, I'm doing that continuously for five days, forgiving everyone in my life. And when you come out, you feel different. And these changes, these brainwave states, they stay with you. So it's really remarkable to think that as we go through life, little hurts, little grudges, kind of stick with you and we carry them. And when you learn to forgive, it unlocks these superpowers within your mind. It's a truly remarkable thing. So this got me experimenting with advanced state training when I'm at level four. And remember, at level four, you want to serve the world. You want to make a massive influence. You're creating things that can shift. You're creating things that can impact millions of people. And at level four, you're using different tools. You've gone beyond creative visualization, beyond intuition. And this gets you at a whole different level, the level of operating at total limitlessness. Now, I hope you enjoyed this training. What I wanted to teach you was to understand the different states so you can understand what state you might be at and to know that at whatever state you're at, there's a tool for you. At level one, it's segment intending. At level two, it's creative visualization. At level three, it's tapping into intuition. At level four, there are additional tools. We won't have the space and the capacity to teach them in this masterclass, but I wanna invite you to try out the Becoming Limitless program. If you like this training, you're gonna love Becoming Limitless because I go so deep into these advanced tools. And I wanna give you an idea of what's being covered in this program and why it's so critically acclaimed and it's so highly rated. You're gonna learn the advanced forgiveness protocols. And these advanced forgiveness protocols, they completely shift so many aspects of your life. People have reported sudden healings. People have reported broken relationships suddenly coming back together. Forgiveness is one of the most powerful things you can do to access advanced states of mind. You're gonna learn the concept of discipline, how to hack happiness and protocols to hack happiness so that you're in more joyous states. Today we know from science that happiness is a superpower to make you more productive. And when you are in the right state of joy, you actually manifest better. You're gonna learn how to craft a personal vision. See, many people think they know what they want for themselves, but their visions for themselves are incomplete. What are all the different aspects of a personal vision that you gotta to touch so that you're not just the guy who is wealthy, but having crappy health, or you're not just a person who has great relationships, but is broke, but you are thriving in all different aspects of your personal vision. Then we go to intuition and inspiration. So great, you have your personal vision, but now let's tap into the universe and understand what is it that you're here for so that you are pursuing the right goals, the right visions for your sole purpose. And you learn to activate intuition so that not only are you able to listen, but you're able to listen to that voice to get guidance in day-to-day -day things from, from what, where to go for your vacation to what to say at a business meeting to new ideas for your business. Now, when we talk about intuition, one of the powerful tools that you're gonna learn here is a tool called the Delta Doorway. So the Delta Doorway is a tool that you use when you're going to bed, right? You literally tap into states of awareness that you access when you are asleep. And it's, it sounds incredible, but when I learned this, it changed my life. Many problems that we cannot solve at our waking state, we can solve at the Delta doorway when we are completely tapped into higher intelligence. So Delta is a state of mind that you go to when you're asleep. And some philosophers believe that when you're at Delta, which we go into when we're asleep, so you do it every night, you are tapped directly into higher intelligence. Now, what if there was a way for you to take that which you want, the healing or the, or, or, or the intention or the inspiration you wanna act on and put that into your Delta state so that when you're asleep, it can directly communicate with the universe that can then bring that to reality. 
That's what the Delta Doorway is about. It's for solving problems that you have no idea how to solve. And from there, we go on to the next chapter. So you see that picture? I'm wearing a t-shirt there that says Ben Reality. That was taken at Nine Valley University, right? And our customers love that phrase, Ben Reality, which is why it's on t-shirt. It's almost like a rallying cry because people who practice this, they know that they get this ability. And one of the ways I'll train you on this ability is the concept of merging. So you've learned intuition, you learn the Delta Doorway. Now you learn this aspect called merging. Merging is beyond creative visualization. Creative visualization happens at the alpha level, but merging happens at deeper levels of mind. Merging is where you have an intention and you breathe life into that intention and give it a consciousness and a soul of its own. And then you merge with that intention. And it's the most effective way to shift reality. I merge with my intentions every single day. And the best thing about merging is, it's not something you need to repeat every single day. Creative visualization, you need to repeat the same thing day after day. With merging, you do it once and then you forget. And you may never need to go back to it because the coincidences and the synchronicities happen that fast. Merging is the power tool uh, in this program. And the final chapter, it's all about rallying people around your vision. That's my team. I can't do anything I'm doing without this incredible people around me. It's about how when you get to that level where you're able to create such a major dent in the world, how do you ally with other people who have that similar purpose? How do you rally people around this cause? So whether it's a cause for the environment or it's a cause for peace or it's a cause to create transformation, you can build teams and attract the right people to push this course forward. It's a powerful tool that goes beyond just creating through yourself to creating with others. And that accelerates everything. As I'm recording this, right, I'm reading the news and I'm seeing that there's such a phenomenon of, of breakdowns and stress and anxiety in the world today. I just read an article about Elon Musk, who is a man I truly, truly, truly respect. He's changing the world. He wants to move mankind away from fossil fuels so that we can be a more environmentally sustainable species. He wants to colonize Mars. But right now, he just confessed to the New York Times that he's going through a massive breakdown. He can't sleep without being hooked on Ambien. He doesn't get to leave the office till 3 a.m. People are asking him to resign because he's tweeting crazy things on Twitter. And I love Elon. But that's not the way to make an impact, right? There are ways where you can make a better impact without sacrificing your health or your marriage or your relationship. And that's really what this is about. There are people who are making a powerful impact by getting into these states and operating right, not just through their physical selves, but through their spiritual selves while being tapped into something greater. That is really what Becoming Limitless is about. So I hope you enjoyed this training and I ask you to check out this program. It has a 10-day guarantee, so you can enroll in the program, you can explore the program, and if you feel this isn't for you, you get a full unconditional refund. But try it out, and maybe you'll see why this is such a highly rated program. I thought I'd share with you a couple of things that people have said about this program. Pavel, for example, said, as a result of the above, I've moved further in my projects than the previous seven years. And he did this in six months, right? That's the type that's the type of time skill we are talking about. What may take you seven years, you now do in six months. And this guy, Chris, said, the level of growth I've seen in eight weeks has been unlike anything else I've ever experienced. Again, notice the pattern. He's doing in eight weeks what previously he had spent a lifetime trying to study. This guy, Sim Chi Chow from Singapore, well, check that out. He went from 103 kilograms to 86 kilograms. He said, my life is more meaningful. I feel growth in every aspect of my life. My finances, body, health, relationship, and career totally changed. I also attracted my girlfriend in my life, and now my life is surrounded by love. And the really remarkable thing about this is, is that, is that he said, after four months of practicing with the exercise, I have lost 17 kilograms. I really appreciate becoming limitless. It changed my life. Sometimes we don't even know how simply shifting our ability to access these altered states can radically transform our life. And I mean it when I say that. So many things in your life start shifting. For example, Tabby Jane said, I've gone from being a one-person business to a new one emerging with a team of five and complete clarity on the big vision that's driving everything forward. I've been struggling with this for a year and now boom, it's all emerging.
Even world-class authorities in human psychology like Donna Hartman, PhD research psychologist, Pasadena, California, said this, I'm a PhD researcher in psychology and I can honestly say I don't remember being this excited learning in my doctoral program as I am with Mind Valley teachings. I feel like a kid in a candy store if only my PhD program had been this exciting. Umbrella McCulley says, I've learned more in a week than during six years I spent in university. Now you can go on this program as slow or as fast as you want. Vanessa Pele from Durban, South Africa did it in six days. And this is what he said. So he didn't wait eight weeks, he did it in six days. I've been studying personal development and self-improvement and meditation for years and it hasn't given me as much as this program has. It's so practical and the process so easy to follow. And if you're a coach, this program really gives you additional tools you can use. So Katrin Potter from Santa Clara, USA, she's a holistic health coach and, and a hypnotherapist. And she said, becoming limitless inspired me to push my boundaries and to believe anything is possible. Now I do what I love and I know I have the tools to transform people's lives for the better. So I encourage you to check out Becoming Limitless. Uh, go ahead and enroll on it on Mind Valley. And and a great thing about the program is everyone who enrolls in this is joined together in a beautiful Facebook tribe. And we actually have tribe facilitators who will work with you to take you through the program. They are there to answer your question. It is not something that you do just by yourself. You can if you want to, but all our students join together in a given batch. There's a start date and an end date. We hold each other accountable, and I make appearances in the tribe every now and then to say hi, to greet people, and to support you with your questions. I cannot wait to see you in Becoming Limitless and to see you as one of our remarkable case studies. As a thank you for watching this masterclass for the last one hour, if you enroll in Becoming Limitless with the link directly below this masterclass, just scroll down and you'll see it, you'll get a special discount, a special discount that's only available here as a thank you for investing time in this masterclass. Do not close this page because the only other way to get this discount is to repeat this masterclass all over again. But enroll now, get a special discount, and I cannot wait to see you in this program. The next batch starts very soon. As I said, we have all our students join together and go through the transformation together, and you want to be part of that batch. The next batch starts very soon. I cannot wait to see you in Becoming Limitless. Really, in doing the course Becoming Limitless, I have been able to become more friendly with the mind. They say I'm a completely different person. My life has drastically changed. I am much happier. My relationship with my son is amazing. The way I, I'm looking at life has changed. The quests are done in such a way that I believe all learning should be done. The thing that caught my attention was bending reality, controlling and taming the mind. It's in little bits and pieces over a period of days and it gives you a chance to really incorporate what you're learning. I've been two or three times I've repeated the course already. And it's it's in small enough pieces so it's manageable. We as human beings have the power of doing whatever we want in our life. Through the power of visualization you can visualize anything and you, you basically go for it.